So, now for chapter 3, we want to deal with the very first um, curve here. So this is um, number 2, and that is dealing with the um, demand curve. So, let's start off first with how it is shaped. Again, this is for a single market for single product, so let's just stick with the uh, pretty simple product of the telephone, uh, cell phone. On the x-axis, meaning the horizontal axis, the straight line here, that we are talking about the quantity of the product, so in this case it's going to be the quantity of phones. And on the y-axis, the vertical axis, we're going to have the price of the product, in this case it's going to be the price of phones. In the demand curve, which again reflects the buyer, so this is going to be the buyers of the product, this is going to be the demand for phones. And with only one exception, um, it is always, always, almost, 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 always, always, always uh, downward sloping. So this is how it looks, downward sloping, with respect to P and Q. And what the demand reflects here is it reflects two things. It reflects or shows us both the willingness and ability of consumers to buy the product at a particular price. So basically it just tells us how much are they going to buy? Um, how much are they going to buy given um, the different prices that are out there? And this demand then has a function. Demand is a function of, now I'm going to use this fancy F term here, but it's just a mathematical way of saying that this is a function of. Demand is a function, so this would be demand for phones, is a function of the price of phones. The income of the consumer, their tastes and preferences, do they want the phone that's being sold? How badly do they want cell phones in general? The total population. the price of related products, that means products that are used jointly with phones, like um, chargers or cell phone cases, that kind of thing. And then the prices that are expected in the future. So that's the definition, the, the functional definition then of demand. Um, what we want to do is we want to distinguish between two different, um, we want to distinguish between two different kinds of, uh, two different parts of this function. There's going to be a difference between this variable versus all of the other variables. And that difference is going to come out uh, it's going to be more clear to us when we look at um, uh, when we look at how we could shift the curve, because we're going to be we're going to be using a certain um, assumption here um, called the ceteris paribus assumption, which we'll see um, in video numbers or pencast number six. So here's what you need to ask yourself. What would you do if the product that you were buying, what if those, what if the phones were suddenly lower? What would you do? Would you buy more or would you buy fewer? All right, and I'll pause here. If you think for yourself here. Would you buy more phones if, or less phones if they were cheaper? You would probably buy more. 
Um, not too surprising, which generally then leads us to our law of demand. And that's the law of demand is that as the price changes, the quantity demanded moves in the opposite direction. In other words, as the price goes up, people buy less. As the price goes down, people buy more. Now let me say a few things about what I mean specifically by quantity demanded and then how I'm writing this out. So this here is my demand curve. So I'm going to start to use P just to stand for price, Q just to stand for quantity. This would be in the phones market. And this is my demand for phones. Now this is a line here. The entire line, the entire curve is the demand curve. That entire curve the entire line here. But there's a lot of individual points on that curve. And those individual points are quantity demanded points. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to distinguish then between the entire demand curve and the quantity demanded. What that does for us is it actually means then that as the price changes, we're not actually changing the demand curve. Right? This curve is actually staying the same. Instead what's happening is that we are moving along the curve. How does this one look? This one, if I just put P and Q here, is that the price is going up and then I'm moving along the curve like that. Over here, what's happening, there's my demand curve, is that the price is falling and now I'm moving from left to right along the curve. But do you see this right here? This increase right here I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this, sorry, not increase, this decrease right here, and this increase right here, those two things I circled there, that's the quantity demanded moving. So the price is changing and it's changing the quantity. The price is changing and the quantity is changing. Now the way that I write out quantity demanded, I mean I could have written it out like quantity demanded, which you can choose to do as well. But you may see me from time to time just referring to it as Q subscript D. It's a shorthand way of describing quantity demanded. What you should remember, and what's important to remember, is that you can't use the terms interchangeably. You can't say here that the demand is changing. And you can't say here that the demand is changing. Because when you say that the demand is changing, you're actually saying that the entire curve is changing. Here we're just moving along the curve. This will become a little bit more evident as we get to pencast number seven.